Good evening. I'll be your board game sommelier tonight. Not sure what to play this evening. Well, that's what I'm here for. Perhaps I could share my tasting notes for one of my very favorite titles that might help you expand your horizons. Very good. In that case, might I suggest? Hi, I'm Alex Hart and welcome to Might I Suggest a Game, a channel devoted to helping you find your perfect board game. Today, we're talking about Viticulture from Stonemeyer Games, one of my favorite games by them, and I'm going to give you some of my tasting notes for this game. Now, when I say tasting notes, here's what I mean. Just like a wine sommelier might give you his primary, secondary, and tertiary thoughts on how to experience the wine all the way through, I'll do the same for this board game. So, I'll give you my initial thoughts, my first impressions, what I thought about the theme, what I thought about the packaging and the components, and then I'll move on into my secondary thoughts where I talk about gameplay. I give you a little bit of an overview of the rules and what to expect when you play the game. And then I'll move on into my final thoughts where I talk a little bit about what I thought after playing the game, what other games it reminded me of, and what types of people might like this game. If that sounds like something you're into, I'm planning on doing a lot of these videos, so don't forget to subscribe down below. Now, is Viticulture the perfect game for you? Let's find out, shall we? The first thing that you notice about this game is this beautiful packaging. This version has a really nice sleeve on the outside that kind of looks like the oaken barrel that the wine might be aged in. It's got rings on it from tastings that might have happened previously, and it just really leans into the theme to give you a taste of the experience ahead. When you take the sleeve off, you have also a very, very nice box that would look good on any shelf. Stonemeyer Games is known for its really quality components, and this game is no exception. Take a look at these custom meeples. You've got the trellis, the windmill, the cottage. They also have these nice worker meeples. The grande worker has double the baskets, double the fun, and a really nice first player token to boot. Some of the other components include this wine bottle and cork, very thematic. And the cards also include this really nice art, which normally I wouldn't necessarily be a fan of this style, but I think it works really well with this game. You've also got these nice glass wine tokens and these really well-made coins that have a nice call out to sponsors on the back. Viticulture is a worker placement game for two to six players that usually plays anywhere between 45 minutes and about two hours, depending on who you're playing with. Now, although it looks like there's a lot going on here, don't let the setup scare you. The mechanics and the gameplay are actually quite simple. In Viticulture, you'll start with three coins and three workers, one of which is the Grande worker. Your starting hand will also include a Pinot vine and a random summer visitor card. You can also acquire four more workers and any of these structures which will help you throughout the game. The game is played over several rounds, each of which is broken up into four seasons detailed here on the board. The first of which is the spring. In the spring, players will determine the player order for the rest of the year, starting with the first player. The higher you put it, the sooner you go, but the lower you put it, the better the one-time bonus. The first player decides to put it on the four, which will give them a one-time, one-coin bonus. The next player puts it on the six, which gives them a one-time victory point bonus. The blue player decides to go on two, which allows them to draw a vine card into their hand. The next season is the summer, in which players will take their workers and place them on the summer actions that they would like to take. If at any point you want to take an action but there's no spots left, you'll have to use your grande worker and double up on it. Remember, you have a limited amount of workers and you still have to take actions in the fall, so once you feel like you've done enough, you can pass and move on to the next round. During the fall, players will take a summer or a winter visitor card, unless they've built the cottage, in which case they can take two total cards from either stack. In the winter, just like in the summer, you'll place your workers on the board to take actions specific to this season. If you run out of workers, you'll have to pass and you can't take any more actions during this round. 
Gameplay will continue until everyone has placed all their workers. Once all the workers have been placed, the round is over, and the first player marker will be passed counterclockwise to the player on your right. You'll clear all the workers off the board, and you'll begin a new year. A big mechanic of this game is how you harvest grapes, crush them, turn it into wine, and turn those wines into orders. If I take the harvest action here, I'll take the sum of all my grapes, which is four red and one white, and place wine tokens on my board. If I were to take the crush action, I can take all the tokens of the same colored grape and move them into my cellar. Now that I have a four and a three red in my cellar, I can complete this order, which requires a four and a three red. I'll discard these two wine tokens and then gain the reward that's at the bottom of this card. Players will compete throughout the game to get victory points until someone reaches 20, which will trigger the end of the game. Players will finish up the rest of the year, and whoever has the most victory points at the end wins the game. At the end of the day, Viticulture is a game of simple choices, but as the game progresses, you can see how those choices become harder to decide and harder to make. It's interesting to see which spaces are filled up at the beginning of the game, like gaining money or planting vines, and which spaces are filled up at the end of the game, like filling orders or crushing grapes. Viticulture is a game that rewards you for thinking a few steps ahead, placing your worker on a contrarian spot that no one expected you to, or saving your grande worker for a killer combo at the end of a round. The strategy is always shifting and changing, especially due to the summer and the winter visitor cards. So any player that's able to stay nimble and adapt their strategy accordingly usually ends up winning the game. Viticulture has a lot of elements that feel really familiar even if you don't play games a lot. For example, on your turn in Viticulture, you know exactly what actions you can take, and you're only limited by the amount of times that you can take them. That sounds a lot like the main mechanic of Pandemic. Or another example, what's the main goal of Viticulture? You want to collect goods and use those goods to fulfill contracts. That sounds a lot like the main mechanic of Splendor, although in this game there are certainly a few more steps to go through. So let's break it down. Is this the perfect game for you? Here are my recommendations for the types of people that I think this game would be perfect for. First, if you like wine. If you are a connoisseur, if you love going to the vineyards and walking amongst the grapes and smelling it and telling me what kind of dirt this grape was grown in, then this might be a good game for you. Second, if you're trying to introduce your friends to something a little heavier at game night, but you still want them to enjoy it after one or maybe two or maybe three glasses of wine, then this might also be a good game for you. Lastly, if you're just looking for a deeply thematic experience, one where the mechanics match the real life processes, so when you play the game, it really feels like you're doing that thing in real life, then this game is definitely for you. But I don't wanna categorize you. You can be anything you want. So if any of the things that I talked about in this video interested you, then might I suggest Viticulture. Thanks so much for checking out my tasting notes on the game of Viticulture. I'm hoping to make this a more regular series, so if there's other games that you'd like to see my tasting notes on, feel free to drop them below in the comments, because I read every one of those. Thanks so much again for your support. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so I can continue growing this channel and keep helping you find your perfect board game. Once again, this has been a Might I Suggest a Game production, and I'm Alex Hart, your board game sommelier, Signing off.